as students, we all have exams, but it can be very difficult to figure out exactly what you need to know for these exams. Watch this video to find out exactly how I set up my exam revision schedule and how this helps me secure good grades by learning exactly what I need to know. Hi everyone, my name is Hazal and I'm a UK based medical student. I run this channel with my best friend Liddy and we use it to document our lives to becoming doctors as well as sharing student tips along the way. Sometimes the reason why it's difficult to perform well at medical school isn't because of demotivation or being unproductive or even because of the difficulty of the content. Sometimes it's simply down to studying the wrong information or not knowing how to study in a time frame and format that's suitable for your exams. This was the case for me at the start of my preclinical years of medical school. Especially not having a specification or a content list, I didn't know how to orientate myself, I didn't know how to revise and I didn't know what to learn for my exams which were in six weeks. But then I discovered this revision schedule which changed my life. Let's get into exactly what this method was and how I scheduled my revision for preclinical years of medical school. Step one is to have one platform. It makes your life so much easier if all your exam information, revision schedule and content you need to learn is all in one place. I highly recommend using Notion as it's easy to use and edit but you can use any platform that you would like. Step number two is to know your deadlines. Figure out what your exam dates are and exactly what these exams consist of. For example, is it an essay paper or a data interpretation paper? Is it a paper on all your modules or just on module one or module two? Once you figure these out, note these down at the top of your page. This makes it very easy for you to see exactly where you need to be ready and know all your content by. Step number three is to collect your resources. Note down how you will study for your exams and collect your resources accordingly. For example, are you going to use notes, YouTube videos, etc. It's up to you what you decide to use and what works best for your learning style. This is important because when you go to revise a specific topic, you will know exactly how to do so. I want to stress that the resources you gather are not a strict list and they are subject to change with each topic. But it is important that you narrow down your resources so that you don't get overwhelmed when it comes to doing the work. What me and Liddy personally did was we would make condensed notes for each of our lectures throughout the year. Because when you are stuck on a topic, it's so much easier to spend 10 minutes going over summarized notes rather than finding your lecture and going through the whole lecture slides. Step number four is to make a table. This table is inspired by my good friend Elizabeth, but there are some changes that make it more suited to me and my type of learning. So to get started, open up Notion or your preferred platform and make a big table with the following headings. The first column will have all of the subtopics you need to know for your exam. To make it easier, I start by writing all of my main topics, so like my module names, and then I will write all the subtopics within that topic beneath it. So for example, I'll start with my first module, which is cardiorespiratory, and then I'll write all the topics within that module, including cardiac valves, ECGs, and cardiac remodeling. If your course is anything like mine, you won't be given a list of all your subtopics, and instead you'll just have a list of all your lectures. But by going through your lecture list, you can kind of figure out what your main subtopics are, and you can also use your textbooks and online resources. Then make a list of all the important things you actually need to know for each subtopic. Sometimes in lectures, you are given extra information that is there to complement your knowledge, but you don't actually need to know it, and therefore you don't actually need to revise this stuff. Therefore, it's really useful to have an explicit list of everything you actually need to know for each subtopic. Next, I add all the resources that help me learn each subtopic. So for example, if the subtopic is anatomy related, I may add a link to KenHub. If you guys are interested in checking out KenHub, you can do so by using the discount code in the description box down below. Aside from all the useful for websites, I'll also add all my summarized lecture notes into this section. This is also that when it comes to revising that specific subtopic, you have all the resources you need lined up for you ready to use. There are lots of different ways you can revise each subtopic and this depends completely on your way of learning. For example, you can go through summarized lecture notes that you have made on each lecture, or you can even make 10 to 15 exam style questions on each subtopic covering all the important information. Next is to have a green, amber, red system for each subtopic. Subtopic. You can use this system to grade how easy or hard you found each subtopic. This will help you focus on all your weak areas throughout your revision. If you would like to track how you are progressing for each subtopic, you can have a column for attempt one, attempt two, attempt three, etc. This way, every time you revise that specific subtopic, you can rate it green, 
amber or red and you can see if your understanding is getting better and finally at the very end of your table have a column with a tick box for every single subtopic in this column once you have revised a subtopic enough and you are confident in your knowledge you can tick it off to show that you know this subtopic this is a nice way to visualize exactly what you have learned and what you are confident in but also what you still need to learn step number five is to apply a time frame work out how many subtopics you have and apply a time frame in which you have to go through every single one also remember that for some topics they won't be a green right away so you have to give yourself enough time to go over all your amber and red subtopics until you understand them well enough Usually Lydia and I would give ourselves six weeks to prepare for an exam and although eight weeks would be better, that's not always possible. It's also really important to aim to finish your revision one or two weeks before your actual exam date. Firstly, it gives you time for any delays in your revision. It also gives you time to go over those really hard topics and plus it gives you time to do even more practice questions before your exam. Look at your subtopics, look at your time period and work backwards to figure out exactly when you need to start revising and how many subtopics you need to go through every single day to finish on time of course remember that during this time this table helps you learn all the content for your exam but you also need to make sure you are doing practice questions throughout this time so that you test your knowledge with exam style questions if any of you would like me to create refined and detailed notion templates to help facilitate this method make sure to leave a comment down below so now we know the method we know the table now let's get into some top tips top tip number one is to know your exam formats I I want to stress how important it is to know your exam format because your exam format will determine how you prepare for that exam. For example, at medical school, we have these things called OSCEs, which are physical exams. And instead of sitting down and doing practice questions for that exam, I need to do physical practice. And by knowing this, I can prepare my revision for that exam accordingly. Whereas for my written exams, I know that I need to sit down and go through my notes and do practice questions. Top tip number two is to work together. When it comes to revision, two is better than one. Lydia and I went through the whole exam season together and although sometimes we will take out our stress on each other, that moral support is so needed in this high intensity situation. Revising alone can be quite boring and demotivating at times but having someone else there can really help you push through this. So if you can, try to make an exam revision schedule with a friend and slot in times where you work together. This will not only help you guys revise and stay motivated but it will also help keep each other accountable. If you guys would like, you can also study with us during one of our YouTube study with me lives. Check out our community page to figure out when our next study with me is. And finally, step number three is to prioritize. You won't always have time to go through every single topic in detail before your exam and that is okay. In my own experience and especially with medical school, it is quite unrealistic to think that you can go through every single little topic in detail before your exams. And to be very clear, I'm not encouraging you guys to do the bare minimum and I'm not encouraging you guys to ignore half of your modules. I'm just saying that it can be quite unrealistic to expect yourself to go through every single detail for every single exam. Instead what I would do was focus on overarching themes that came up in lectures again and again rather than focusing on the small details that come up once in one lecture. So these were the things that I would prioritize first and go through first and of course if I had time after I would go over the less important topics as well. But again this is how I did it and you guys should do what works best for you. This is how I prepared for my exams in preclinical years of medical school but if you guys would like to know how I am now preparing for my exams in clinical years of medical school make sure to leave a comment down below. Of course all the information at university can be quite difficult to consume and to keep on top of so if you would like to see the three-step process I use to keep on top of my studies at medical school make sure to check out the video that's on screen right now. Thank you all very much for watching this video I really hope you guys found it useful and I'll see you in a new video next time. Bye.